Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Where are you traveling? See, no matter who you are, you are on a journey, and it is a spiritual journey. And if you are a believer in Messiah Yeshua, then you are going to encounter, at times, probably much more frequently than you know, you are going to encounter the enemy. And we need to realize what we've been talking about for, for several weeks. And that is that we have been equipped for victory. I want to say that again. We have been equipped for victory. Victory over the enemy, and I'm speaking about Satan, and all those fallen angels and all those wicked demons that submit and work his purposes rather than the purposes of God. Well, we saw that last week Messiah gave the commandment, get the boat ready, I'm going to the other side. And immediately there was a communication about discipleship. What does it mean? And what should a disciple expect? And that's what we studied last week. And now we're going to learn how to take that truth and apply it, what it means to be a disciple, how a disciple functions, what a disciple does, what he believes, in order that we have victory. And Messiah, he has traveled He's gotten in that boat with his disciples. There's been that, that, that force, that opposition of the enemy, and he's brought it all to nothing. Realize, with the anointing of the Spirit, with the truth of God, we defeat the enemy. Well, look with me to where we left off last week. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, and we're ready for verse 28. Matthew 8 and verse 28. He traveled and he has arrived. Notice what it says. And after coming, after he came into the other side, into the region, the area of the Gargazines. Now, this is an area that is on the other side of the Galilee, the eastern side, in an area where there was great, great sin. And we'll see that in a moment. And because there was great sin, this area had also significant demonic activity. Let's read on. And there met him two individuals, two individuals that were demon-possessed. And where did they come from? They met him coming out of the tombs. Why was that? Well, tombs signify death. Tombs signify spiritual impure, impurity, impurity. And that's what demonic influence picturized, pictures. It pictures death. It pictures that which is impure to God. So these two demonic individuals, they come out to meet Yeshua. And they are, are very violent. Now, because of this demonic influence, they are experiencing violent, a very violent lifestyle. They're not kind, they're not considerate, they're not gentle, they're not demonstrating God's authority rule in their life. They don't have the fruit of the Spirit. But they're very violent so that, it says, certain ones were not able to pass through that way. They forbid individuals to pass by them. Verse, verse 29, and behold. Now, these are demons, 
but they are spiritually wiser than most people. Why do I say that? Notice what the scripture says, verse, verse 29. And behold, they were crying out, saying, What to us and to you, Yeshua, the Son of God? Now, I translated that literally, but what it means is, what, what do you and I have in common? Why are you here? Now, they recognize something. They call him the Son of God. That is another term for Messiah. Realize something? The Messiah we talked about, that Messiah, he is going to be the one that establishes God's order. Order throughout all of his creation. Today, what is Messiah about? He's about establishing his order in your life. And it's only when you are recipients of his power that you recognize his authority, that you're walking under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. He teaches us all truth that you are going to be an individual that reflects what a disciple should. Well, these individuals, these two men, what did we learn? They are demonically possessed. And therefore, they are not being a blessing to others. They are afflicting. They are, here's the key. Remember, it says they wouldn't let anyone pass by their way. Why was that? They wanted to show their control. They wanted to influence others according to their will. They wanted to show their power. And that's what demonic influence does. It raises up the, the will of an individual that he becomes dominant. Not that there's any submissiveness part of these individuals' life. So they cry out, look at it, it says they cry out saying, you know, what do we have to do with you, Yeshua? They recognize his name, the Son of God. He says, have you come here before the time in order to torture us. Now, here I see something that's so significant. It's not these two men, their voices are being used, but their voices have been taken over, hijacked by, by the demons. And they want to know something. Have you come here early before your time to deal with us? And what is that? To torture us. The demons know something. They understand, they know, they believe in the ultimate authority over them of Yeshua. He's the Son of God. And they know that they, in the end, are going to be tortured, but they don't care. Because for them, it's all about now. They live for the moment. And they want what they want so much, even if it brings about in the future, well, I won't think about tomorrow today. I won't think about my eternity. I'll just think about this world and I'll live based upon tomorrow will never come. But they understand what their eternal destiny is to be suffering eternally by the Son of God, that he is going to defeat them. So they say, is this why you're here? Verse 30. But there was far from them now, this is important, far from them. There was far from them a, a herd of many pigs, and they were grazing. Now, nothing happens in the Scripture by chance. There is great significance in this. We're talking about demonic power, demonic presence, demonic activity. And it says, in this region, far from them, but nevertheless, they knew it. There was this great herd of many pigs. Now, it doesn't speak here about this wild boar. It's talking about a herd, meaning that they were grazing, they were being shepherd. Now, we know something. We know that, that pig is not kosher. Pork ought not to be eaten. Now, if you are under the false impression that because of faith and because of faulty translations, we'll come to this in the weeks to come. When we look, for example, as Matthew 15, we're only in Matthew 8, but we'll make it there, God willing, to Matthew 15. 
And you're going to be amazed of how translators alter, change, deceive you by making translation, adding words, subtracting words, changing words in order to justify what they want. But there is no way, and I know all the arguments, I've seen all the, the statements concerning this, but pig is not appropriate. Don't eat pork. You know, when we're recording this, there is that, that virus that, that originated in, in uh, China. And what we're being told now, maybe this is true or maybe it's not, but its origin is in this, this kind of uh, uh, reptile that people have been eating. Well, if they didn't eat that reptile, if they didn't violate God's word, then this virus would not have, have come into contact with human beings. No, there is relevance in the commandments of God. And we're reading not Old Testament, not that it matters to me, this all is God's word. But this is in the New Testament. And we're seeing the New Testament undeniably ties demonic influence with pigs. He says, behold, they're speaking and there's this, this, this large herd of pigs being shepherd. That's what it literally means. Verse, verse 31. And the demons beseeched him. Notice they're under his authority. They have to be. The demons, the demons beseeched him, saying, Since you are casting us out, not if, but since you are casting us out, they knew why he came. Since you are casting us out, permit us. They can do nothing without his permission. Permit us that we can go away into the herd of pigs. Now notice, there was other animals. There were fish in the sea. There were birds in the air. But they chose, we want to be with the pigs. That's where they desired to be. And what does the scripture say? Look, if you would, now to verse 32. And he said to them, go. And they went and gone into the herd of pigs. You notice that? Over and over and over. It's talking about these herds of pigs. And behold, immediately. Now, Messiah, he is in control. And we need to look at this and pay great attention to what's happening. Because sometimes we just read it so quickly and not carefully that we miss out on some of the message what the word of god is trying attempting to convey to us see there's great significance in every detail of the scripture what messiah is showing us is that he is there he's come if you pay attention to to the context earlier on he is saying gave the command i'm going away the implication is, I need to go away. In other words, there's ministry to be done. He begins on this journey, and immediately we are encountered with several discussions about discipleship, what it means to be a disciple and what it means just simply to be men and women. And when we are of little faith and of great fear, we're not walking as disciples were behaving as men it's only when we recognize the authority that God has given to us for spiritual warfare and this involves doing war against demonic influence demons what do we see over and over in this passage how they speak they recognize Yeshua's authority they recognize that only if he permits can they do anything they understand his supreme authority in this world. The question is, do you? Does your life demonstrate that he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings? So it's not by coincidence. It's not by chance. It is not of insignificance that they plead and beseech him to allow them their choice, not his, 
to go into this herd of pigs. Now, there is pig farming going on in this area. And it just shows how far removed this community is from the Word of God, from the revelation of the Torah. There ought not be pig farmers in this area, but there is. Why? I said it. A rejection of the commandments of God. No, when we, when we love Messiah, we're going to love His commandments, and we're going to want to implement them in our life. We're going to recognize that they are of wisdom. And they are given in order to be instructions on how we need to order our life. Well, these demons, just like the inhabitants of this area, they, they felt comfortable. They liked the pigs. And they chose the pigs, both the demons and the inhabitants of this area. So Yeshua says, uh, uh, you can go into them. And they departed. They went out. And they went away into the herd of pigs. And notice the next part of verse 32, and behold. Something significant is about to happen. And behold, and we have this word, for, for rushing. For an abrupt happening. Now, when God brings about judgment, and this is the context, when God brings about judgment over these things that He does not approve on. See, this is what wisdom teaches us. Everything that's, that's around us, everything in our life, we should take a spiritual inventory. We should go through our possessions, what we're doing, our behavior, what is really part of our life, and say, God, do you approve of this or not? Is this something that is going to encounter your judgment? And his judgment will come, and it will come by surprise. It will not be something that uh, we will be thinking about, perceiving, expecting. We ought to, but if we're not in his truth, we won't. The judgment of God comes abruptly upon those who reject him. And that's what we're seeing in this passage of Scripture. We read, look at end of verse 32, and all of this herd of the pigs, they rushed, and they rushed down this, this ramp, so to speak, this, this downward direction. Now, here's what the scripture says. You read the teachings of Rob Shul, the Apostle Paul, and he speaks about this upward call. He says, set your mind on the things up above. We have an upward call. I have an acquaintance, he probably doesn't remember me, but, but I used to live in the northern part of Israel in a town called Svat, and I live in the southern part of Israel, known as the Shefelah, the, the lowlands along the Mediterranean. But when I was up in Svat, there was this rab, this rabbi, and he would give a lecture every Shabbat morning prior to the reading of the Torah, a very short one. And he was always talking about Aliyah ve Yerida. Aliyah is going up, Yerida going down. And he would look at the scriptures, that Torah portion, and we would find things that move up and things that move down. Moving down is not good. Moving down is always in regard to satanic activity and divine judgment. Now, divine judgment is good, but we don't want to experience God's divine judgment that brings about destruction. No, we want to be on that upward call, setting our minds on the things relating to the kingdom, His promises, so that we don't receive the destruction of His judgment, but we receive the reward of His faithfulness based upon His promises and His desire to give us blessings. So this is the exact opposite of that. There was this large herd of pigs, and we read here that they rushed in a moment down this embankment into the sea, and there it says they died in the water. 
Now, pigs don't belong in the water. And what the scripture is telling us is this. Demonic influence in pigs. Did you realize that pigs are very similar to human beings? I had a friend. She had to have a valve replaced, and she had a pig valve put into her because of the similarity. In other words, this is what we see. The scripture is trying to teach us when those demonic, demonic demons, a little redundant, when those demons went into the pigs, it caused them to go down. What is that telling us? It's telling us demonic influence in our life does not raise us up, doesn't put us on this upward call, but it causes us to have a quick, a sudden decline that leads to, leads to death ultimately. See, we want to be released from demonic influence. We know something. If you have the Holy Spirit, you cannot be possessed by a demon. Demons can influence, they can can oppress, they can affect, but they cannot possess. But notice what the scripture says. In a moment, this herd of pigs, they, they rush down this embankment and they perish in the sea in the water. Verse 33. But, in contrast to what should be, but these uh, uh herdsmen they they did something they fled and they went away into the city and they proclaim what do they proclaim all all the things relating to these two demon possessed men so these individuals they witness the spectacle they saw that sudden destruction the defeat they saw that that and heard this discussion, how these demons, they went out of these two men, and they went into this herd of pigs and the destruction that followed. The scripture says very clearly, they went into the city and proclaimed all, all the things concerning these, these ones having been possessed, demonized, in other words. Verse 34, our last verse. Now, to me, this is one of the most shocking verses in the Bible because you would expect there to be great glory. Praise God that these two men have been healed. Praise God that He has worked and not brought destruction upon us, but has manifested our sin, destroyed that which is not pleasing to God and has taught us a wonderful lesson no that's not what we see here they didn't get the lesson they understood it but they rejected it notice what the scripture says verse 34 and behold all the city went out in order to meet for the purpose of meeting Yeshua now we would think this is wonderful they heard about Yeshua this one who exercised the demons out of these two individuals, these two individuals that were ruling over this city. Now things have been restored. This demonic influence and the pigs, they're no longer there. They've all been destroyed. Behold, all the city go out to meet Yeshua. And seeing him, now this is not the normal word for seeing. This is a word for perceiving something in detail. Noticing, meaning they understood what the scriptures conveying to the reader is this. They understood Yeshua, who he was, is, and what he came to do and what he's going to bring about. And notice what it says. They beseech him that he should do something. What is that? They beseech him that he should make a home there, stay there, teach them, bless them. No, that he should leave from their area. Now, what were they doing? Very clearly, there's no other way to interpret this. 
they were rejecting the revelation of God. They did not want His influence. They did not want His power interrupting their objectives. What about you? When you come in contact with spiritual truth, are you pursuing more? Do you want that truth to be implanted into your life? That there might be a righteous, a godly change, one that is pleasing to God, one that will be a blessing to you, one that prepares you for that day of judgment. Or are you foolish? Are you like all the residents, all the inhabitants of this city? They understood who he was. They rejected. They beseeched him. Same word, a same word that speaks about a great desire. There's others that have a great desire for him to minister to them, for him, Yeshua, to work in their life, to bring a change, to free them from demonic influence, not these people. They looked at what was done and they said, you get out. We don't want you in our region. We don't like the change that you bring. We're not happy. We're not pleased with the destruction of, of our pigs. No, they chose pork instead of Messiah's presence. What about you? What are the things that you're holding on to that's causing you to say no to the work of Messiah in your life? It is so sad, it is so foolish, and it's going to bring about eternal regret. No, there are things in my life, there are things in your life that we want Messiah to come and cast out, to get rid of and destroy. No, a wise one, we want him to remain in our region. We want him to function, to minister to us but not this group. And this group, the other side, you know what? In my opinion, that other group represents the world today. More and more, the world wants no contact, no presence of Messiah here. Everything that he taught, they reject. They're saying, get out. And that's what so much of the world is saying to biblical truth. Well, once more, our time has concluded. Until next week, and we begin a new chapter, Matthew, and chapter 9. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.